Hey there, everybody. Glad we're together today right here, Huddle Discovery Online, especially those of you that are joining us for maybe the very first time. Glad you're here. If we have not met before, my name is Johnny, serve as one of the pastors here at Huddle Discovery United Methodist Church. At the time of recording this, uh, the Sunday that this video is debuting, uh, it's November 5th, and we are celebrating All Saints Sunday. It's a special day in the life of the church, and so if you are watching this around that time, beginning of November, I hope you are finding ways to celebrate those that you have loved and have gone on to glory, uh, maybe those that you've known personally or those that you consider heroes of the faith. I hope you are celebrating them and thanking God for them and the impact that they have had on your life today. So today we're continuing in our time in 1 Thessalonians. Uh, we've been doing this because we all want real faith that really matters in the real world that we live in. That's why as we ramp up into this busy and beautiful season in our lives and in the life of the church on our way to Advent, which is the most wonderful time of the year, we've been looking at a couple of the Apostle Paul's letters to churches that he helped start and cared for in the first century when Christianity was brand new and barely even registering on the global radar. Paul was starting these churches, caring for these churches, writing letters to these churches as a way to continue to care for them and lead them. Paul is a real person, writing to real people in a real place, striving for real faith in the real world. So that's why it ha can have such an impact for us. There's a lot of pastoral and practical wisdom for us contained within these letters for us to sort of mine out, and that's what we've been doing. For the last two weeks, we've been in 1 Thessalonians. We've talked about the importance of gratitude, and the critical nature of genuine connection in community with one another. And today, we're talking about honor. Our reading for today comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, starting in verse 9. Paul says, Surely you remember, brothers and sisters, our toil and hardship. We worked night and day in order not to be a burden to anyone while we preached the gospel of God to you. You are witnesses, and so is God, of how holy, righteous, and blameless we were among you who believed. For you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God, who calls you into his kingdom and glory. And we also thank God continually, because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as a human word, but as it actually is, the word of God, which is indeed at work in you who believe. This is the word of God for the people of God, Thanks be to God. So here in this second chapter of Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, Paul has used familial metaphors to try and illuminate the type of relationship that he shares with his congregation, at least the way he sees his relationship to this congregation. Last week, there was a couple of them, so he's positioned himself as a child. If you looked at verse uh, 7 from chapter 2 last week, he says, We were like young children among you. He also has positioned himself as a mother. Look at chapter 2, verses 7 and 8. Just as a nursing mother cares for her children, so we cared for you. And now, in our reading for today, a father. Chapter 2, verse 11. We dealt with each of you as a father deals with his children. Now, the earliest church theologians, like John Chrysostom uh, and others, point out that Paul uses these familial metaphors with great intention, as you would expect. When Paul refers to himself as a child, not just in this letter, but in other letters, when he refers to himself as a child among the congregation, what he's trying to communicate is a sense of vulnerability or innocence or maybe even need, the need for care. So when he talks to the Thessalonians, he often talks about not only his vulnerability, but his need for their care. And so he has positioned himself as a child among them, somebody who is vulnerable to them, sharing life with them and is in need of their care. When he refers to himself as a mother, he's often trying to portray this 
cherishing or caregiving uh, nature. And he does that again in chapter 2 uh, when he talks about how he cared for this congregation like a mother cares for her child. And then when he refers to himself as father, he's often referring to the instructing part of what he does. Usually when he starts referring to himself as the father of this congregation or like a father for this congregation is when he moves into more uh, instruction uh, for the congregation. Now, while we are all aware that each of those characteristics can be present in anyone, regardless of age or gender, this does give us a window into how to translate Paul and understand how he understands his relationships with the various churches that he writes to. Here, Paul sees himself as sort of a spiritual parent to this community of believers, caring for them, teaching them, encouraging them, and comforting them. Paul's relational metaphors are a great reminder that we, Christians, are called to be to one another as family, as the household of faith, with brothers and sisters in Christ. In fact, last week we talked a little bit about this metaphor of the church as a family, as we talked about the importance of us not only sharing the content of the gospel with one another, the words and the wisdom of the gospel, but also sharing genuine connection with one another as we share life together. So the metaphor of family is actually quite apt for how we see ourselves as the church. So Paul's use of this metaphor is a great reminder that we are part of a family, the household of faith. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. But it is also a reminder to remember and honor our own spiritual ancestors, just like we would in our families. It's always of great value to identify our own spiritual ancestors, to see how they have faithfully instructed and influenced us. Fathers, mothers, grandfathers, grandmothers, Sisters, brothers, sons and daughters, teachers, friends, coaches, pastors, and heroes. Those that we have loved and have loved us. Those whose names we know and those whom we've forgotten or maybe we never knew their name. Those who are still around today and those that have gone on to glory. Those who have helped form and shape us into the people that we are today those that showed us love and led us in faith. Who comes to mind for you? Today's a really great day to think about those things. I think every day is a good day to think about those things, but today is a really good day to spend some time thinking about those who have had an actual impact on your life, particularly in the realm of faith. Who comes to mind for you and, and why? What is it that they did? What was it? What, what part of their faithfulness shaped and formed you? See, this sort of practice of remembering helps us with gratitude. Think about not only those that have cared for us, but also give gratitude for, to God for the work that, they, that God did in those persons and that God is doing in us. For me, my wife comes to mind. Uh, she has uh, always been a leader in our household, uh, but the way she continues to explore her faith and how that affects her and how she has continued to grow uh, in her own spiritual and emotional maturity uh, is an inspiration to me and calls me forth to grow in the same. The way she serves and cares, not only our family, but for other people, is an inspiration. And that comes from her faith, and it inspires me, and it shapes me and who I am. I think of my mom and dad who raised us in the faith and in the church. They weren't perfect. They didn't have it all figured out. But one of the things that they were sure to do was to be sure that we were connected to our local church. Uh, even when we drug our feet, even when we didn't want to, even when we didn't like them for making us be there, they made us be there. And it shaped and formed a habit in us to connect with our faith as a part of our life. I think of my grandfather. I spent a summer um, with him. Uh, at a cabin at the lake right after he lost his wife, my grandmother. And he took me and one of my cousins with him, and we spent a lot of time with him there preparing this space for all the people that would come and celebrate his wife's life after her death so that we could remember her and uh, uh, honor her legacy. And so as we were preparing this place for all the family that would come, 
uh, each morning I would wake up and I would see him sitting by the window looking out over the lake with a rosary in his hand and his prayer book as he just conversed with God and remembered his wife. It was a moving moment for me to see that every single week and that sort of faithfulness that nobody else really got to see, that, but I did. It was inspiring. I think of the pastors that I had as I was growing up, especially uh, there's two pastors both named Steve, not related to each other. They just both happen to be named Steve, uh, but in different areas had tremendous impacts on my life at a young age that showed me what a pastor should and could be like and have continued to influence the pastor I am today. There's many more that I could name, but there's uh, real uh, value, importance in remembering our spiritual ancestors. Traditions and practices of remembrance are important because they connect us to the past. It connects us to ourselves, and it connects us to God's work throughout history. Traditions and practices of remembrance are also important because they connect us to one another here in the present. Paul's relational metaphors are a great reminder that we Christians are called to be to one another as family and to care for one another in the community of faith, nurturing and encouraging, affirming and challenging, sharing both vulnerability and strength with one another. Look again at Paul's words. For you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God who calls you into his kingdom and glory. Faith is passed on. It's not necessarily inherent. It's not necessarily discovered on our own. It is something that we pass on to one another. And as we remember our ancestors, let us also remember to live lives ourselves, worthy of God. Our, ance our spiritual ancestors did that. They lived lives worthy of God, and so we become the beneficiaries of that faithfulness. Let us also remember to live ourselves lives worthy of God so that we too might be good ancestors. It echoes the words of uh, James, the brother of Jesus, in his letter, chapter 1, verse 22. He says, be doers of the word and not merely hearers of the word. Now, what he means by that is not that our words somehow earn our salvation. That's not what James means. But he does say, if we say that we have faith, there ought to be some sort of evidence to verify that claim. There ought to be some output in our lives, some change, some difference in us, who we are, how we act, how we walk through this world, and how we treat one another. There should be some difference in us because of our faith. So who are we, this is the second question for us today, who are we intentionally sharing our faith with? Who are we intentionally sharing our faith with and how? For those of you that might be parents, how are you intentionally sharing your faith with your kids? How are you sharing it with your family, the ones that live under the same roof as you, or maybe brothers and sisters, mothers, fathers, grandfathers, grandmothers? How are you sharing your faith with them? What practices do we have in place to nurture faith in those that we love the most and care for the most? I'm not saying that every day has to be a church service or some sort of chapel service in your home. I mean, a really great start is just ensuring that your kids are attending church with you, that you bring them, and that that becomes part of the habit of your faith, not because you're obligated by God to do so, but because that's what you do as a family. That's how we are in our house. This is just what the Browers do. It's not simply because I'm a pastor and my wife sings in the choir. It's not because we feel like we somehow are going to anger God or God's going to punish us if we don't. It's just this is what the Browers do. We engage with our faith in a community of faith. What is that for you? We pray every single night before bedtime. Are the prayers super eloquent and really lofty? No, they're just normal people prayers that we fumble through. But we're sure to do that every single night before we go to bed with one another. What is it that you are doing to nurture faith in others, those that you love the most? And maybe look outside that too. Maybe you don't have anybody living in the home with you today. But what about your friends, your coworkers? How are you nurturing faith in them? Are there invitations to join you in the faith that you have come to know and love and that has shaped your life? As important as it is to remember those that have influenced us, it's also important to remember that we are to be 
and influence. All Saints Day, or for us here, All Saints Sunday, because All Saints Day is actually on November 1st, so we're celebrating it today. All Saints Sunday is an invitation for us to stretch the limits of our vision, to broaden our imagination. All Saints Day asks us to look back and to look forward into the future in order to live well in the present. It asks us to look back and remember those that have influenced us, to honor that contribution that they have made to our life, the influence that they have had on us, so that we might live better in the present. It also asks us to look forward as we long to be good ancestors and to think about the day when we are no longer here and the lives that we leave behind, those that we have cared for and and influenced. It asks us to look forward so that we might live well in the present. All Saints Day wants us to look back and forward so that we might live well here today. And in a world that is increasingly focused on the short term, quick fixes, rapidly changing interests, short term solutions, instant gratification, when every politician seems to be only focused on just getting elected at the next election cycle, when every uh, business is just trying to up the numbers just for this next quarter, when everybody's looking for the short term, Uh, low commitment, instant gratification, our faith gives us the great gifts of practices that slow us down, that invite us to remember and reflect on what has been and reimagine as we look forward to what is possible. It brings our head up so that we can see far behind us and way out ahead of us so that we can notice how God is moving here in the present based on what God has done in the past and what God has promised in the future. That's why I think honor, that word honor, is such a good word to use at this time. Honor's got, it could be a noun or a verb, but in the verb honor, it means two things. It means to either regard with great respect or to fulfill an obligation. And so when we honor our spiritual ancestors, we regard with great respect, we recognize those who have invested in us. And we also seek to fulfill an obligation as they have been an influence to us that we then reinvest in the present for the future. We honor what they have done. And then we honor what they have done by doing the same here in the present as well. It is a great gift and our greatest responsibility to be a good ancestor, to receive, carry, and pass on what was lovingly given to us. Praise be to God. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for all of those that have uh, been in our lives, that have cared for us, those whom we know by name, those who we may have forgotten their name or never caught their name, but still, through the witness of the faith that was in their life, has influenced our faith, has helped us to grow. We pray that as we reflect on those persons and those times, God, that we might find faith within ourselves. As we honor them, we might honor their contribution by continuing to seek to be a good ancestor ourselves as we look forward to the future. As we pray about, God, the work that you have done, the work that you have yet to do so that we might see the work that you want to do in us today. We just pray on this day of all days as we expand our vision, as we open up our imagination, as we pull our head up out of the weeds to see all of the beauty that is around us, that we might also see you at work in us, through us, and all around us so that we might grow in your grace and grow in faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey y'all, it's Pastor Johnny. Thanks for joining us today at Huddle Discovery Online. Be sure to drop a comment down below. Let us know you're here. And if you're so inclined, share this video. We love it when you share your church with your friends. And be sure that you're subscribed to this channel so that you stay notified when new content drops. If you're just checking us out today, we'd love to invite you to worship with us in person on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. here at Huddle Discovery United Methodist Church. 
Also, be sure that you're signed up for our email newsletter so that you can stay up to date with all that's going on in the life of the church and find out how you can get involved. If there's any way myself or Pastor Kyron can connect with you this week, click the connection link in the description of this video. Whether you have questions about the church, membership, baptism, small groups, youth, or children, if you have a prayer request or you'd like to find out uh, how to serve or whatever it is, let us know. We'd love to connect with you. And finally, if you have an offering that you'd like to give to the church today, visit our website at huddodiscovery.org slash give. There you can give digitally, a one-time gift, or set up a reoccurring and automated offering. You'll also find their information to mail in your offering if you prefer that. Grace and peace, y'all. See you again soon.